it because it was just so terrible. Her, her basic point is that these uh, alternative physicists, people who think that they have come up with a completely alternative theory as to the nature of the universe, you know, they've essentially overturned Einstein relativity and quantum mechanics and all of that, and they've replaced it with their own completely separate theory. She says that you know they shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. You know, maybe they, even if they're wrong, and that she blames mainstream science for not being accessible for the the existence of these physics cranks. That's harsh. It was a non sequitur. It was a com- it was completely muddled and confused argument that she was making. Essentially, you know, the, the people that specifically and in general that she was describing are those who, you know, maybe they have some uh, intelligence, some ability to be persistent, to master a, a set of information and maybe even creative ideas. But there's definitely something missing from the process. They're not interfacing with the scientific community. The one person that, that she talks about the most, Jim Carter, took one semester of undergraduate school never published in the peer reviewed literature never did any you know actual research never uh, you know ha- did, didn't even learn the physics that he now disputes and he came up with this completely fabricated you know notion about you know the the whole universe is made out of donut shaped particles called circlons okay <laughs> it's his you know so it's, it's just a crank theory of everything and then she you know she criticizes physicists for you know, who get inundated with these crank theories of right. everything for, for dumping them in the trash. It's like, well, really? What should they do with them? Stop doing real physics and dedicate their entire lives yeah, to... To disproving everyone's science. crazy theories? Yeah, yeah that's a it's phenomenal. Yeah, to reading multi-hundred page treatises that have almost no probability of containing any useful ideas or information. I think whatsoever. there was a This American Life about that called A Little Bit of Knowledge where where they talk to a physicist who has to deal with that stuff. And yeah, it's just overwhelming the amount of requests he gets from cranks. There's nothing to be done about it. Right. You know what? Do the work. Study physics. Steve, th- this reminds me of the the I guess in the past ten years or so, the whole everybody is talented at something. Yeah, the American yeah, every Idol kid phenomenon. gets an award. Yeah, right. You know, no nobody's better than anybody else. <laughs> Crap! I, I, Everyone yeah, that, wins. I mean, it is interesting how much of this is a cultural phenomenon, and is it is, is it something with the more recent generation, or is it something that is there all the time? And American Idol does come up a lot as an example because they showcase people who clearly have. Are, they they go beyond having no talent. They have like a shrieking voice. And then they get indignant and hurt and amazed that the judges don't love them. And then they attack the credibility and the credentials of the judges as if the system is broken. That's why they were rejected. So in my mind, they're a perfect analogy of these cranks. They don't, they're unable to assess their, the limitations of their own knowledge. They think that they're geniuses. They think that the reason they are being rejected by the scientific mainstream community is because it's composed of idiots who are unable to recognize their genius and that the system is broken, it's closed and corrupt, and that's why they're being rejected. They're, they are American Idol rejects. That, that's the same sort of emotional personality profile that we're dealing with. And it's not the fault of mainstream science. It's these people's personalities and their their own failings that make them that way. In, in fact, you know, I do think that the accessibility of and popularization of science is an important issue. It's something that we deal with all the time. But in fact, we are living at a time when science is more accessible to the public than any other time in human history. There is more being written about science, popularizing science to the public than there has ever been before. And now there's blogs and podcasts and scientists writing directly you know, to, a, to a, uh, in a public forum to a lay audience. It's all there. Is it, the problem is that these people are not willing to be spectators. They want to be on an NFL team without ever going, f- learning how to play football or, or showing that they have the ability to the do so. The first and last sports metaphor to ever appear on the Skeptics Guide to the Universe. But that's, that's an interesting <laughs> metaphor, sure about Steve. That. Because imagine if it did work like that. Let's say, let's say that it was physical like that, okay? And you take a person that clearly should not be on the football field and they go out there, they are going to get obliterated. 
The sports analogy is apt because nobody questions the elitism of professional sports. Nobody questions that only the best get on the professional teams, that there's a process you have to go through, right? That it's a meritocracy. There is no everybody wins and everybody's good. And we don't consider it to be a closed or unfair or draconian system because we require people to demonstrate a professional level of, of ability and dedication and training and all that stuff. But the same is true of world class scientists and we should expect the same of them and they and it is an elite club but but people you know rail against the elitism in intellectual circles and in science but it's the same thing as is thinking that anybody should be able to play on an NFL team it's ridiculous and and also though i i think an even bigger problem is is our general our culture's hatred of intellectual elitism and and the fact that yeah. elitism has a negative connotation the fact that you know look at our political races where being the good old boy is seen as we we want to vote for the president you can have a beer with not the intellectual snob and it, i think we're slowly starting to overcome those sort of things but you know it's it's pretty goddamn slow so uh the idea that some blue collar guy can go into his garage and just fix up this perpetual motion machine plays into our fantasies of having the uh the underdog you know the 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 brutish yeah. sort of cool guy you want to have a beer with um overcoming the elite snobs that you know we all love to hate 200 years ago you could do that but now we have 200 years of science that you have to master before you could get to the cutting edge and make a meaningful contribution. And if you're not willing to do that, don't whine about not being taken seriously. The cranks would rather see the system dumbed down to their level so that they can play on those fields. And they have to do that by attacking the legitimate scientists and the legitimate fields of study out there. They, don't, they, they want to get rid of the quality control because they're filtered out by the quality control, and they don't like that. Don't like it. So, yeah, so they want it to be open, right? Where have we heard that before? Tell you what, yeah, I'm grateful for those people, and I'm grateful that they are doing, that they're choosing to do the work that they are doing. Absolutely. We need a Simon Cowell of science (laughs) (laughs) to tell people, look, lovey, you're not made for science. Is that really your Simon Cowell impression? That was awesome, Steve. (laughs) Cowell. Do something else, yeah. not science. All right, next up, Rebecca 